Okay, welcome everyone to Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcast. I'm your host, James P. Madonna uh, of Progressive Discussions, and I am here with my very special guest for the first time on my show, the uh, the authentic, authentically documented man with the world's strongest neck, Jeff T. Rex Bankins from uh, southwestern Louisiana. Jeff, great to have you on the show. Hey, James, it's great to be here, and I appreciate you inviting me. I'm looking forward to the show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, let's go back in time and uh, okay. let uh, tell uh, the folks um, how what inspired you to first get involved with uh, strength training and with strongman competitions. Well, it first started when I was a very young child. Uh, that's when the Incredible Hulk TV show was uh, was uh, showing. Oh, with Bill, with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. That's right. When I saw that, I thought, man, I would love to be strong like that. And at the time, my dad was uh, a comic book reader. So, of course, I got into comic books and superheroes. And uh, to this day, the Incredible Hulk is still my favorite superhero of the uh, you know comic book genre. But um, all of that's what sparked it. But uh, I didn't actually start lifting, I'm going to say correctly, until I was a grown man, probably in my early 20s. That's when I really started learning how to properly work out. Up until that time, I, I used the, uh, you know, the fads and junk that they show in all these muscle magazines that, that doesn't amount to a hill of beans, unless you're on steroids or something. Right. That That, that is very correct. Well, um, you know... The learning process for me, it was the same way, basically, uh, back in, um, when I was, um, I'd say in grammar school, early grammar school, uh, I was a kid. My stepfather used to get the old muscle magazines from way back, uh -huh. uh, um, different ones, one, one by Dan Lurie, one, then Joe Weider's magazine, and, and at that time, Bob Hoffman from the York barbell company had one out and um yeah yeah and i used to look through them and you know i didn't know i was naive and i believed all the advertisements in the magazine that if i just got this protein powder <laughs> exactly <laughs> or or weight gain that this uh uh that uh, let's say dave draper or arnold schwarzenegger or franco colombo is advertising that i'm, I'm gonna get big or you know what of course, they don't tell you they, they took every steroid known to man. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to take a whole handful of Dianabol tablets. Like, he used to pop them like it was candy. But, of course, in the ad, he was promoting all this crap that really didn't do a damn thing for you. And, and they didn't tell you the truth about strength training. That you have to have the correct genetic body type plus you have to eat properly and um, you have to train properly I mean they didn't and they didn't mention the steroids so yeah that, that's the problem with the muscle magazine now what happens is all the kids that's that try to um, that try to do the workouts that the um, professional bodybuilders were doing that was in a magazine those workouts are for people that are on steroids that can physically do them. Exactly. It's way too much work. There's no way you could possibly do that and, and have a life. And, <laughs> ha know, and have, have a life. life. <laughs> I mean, I mean, back then, Joe Weider probably sponsored, you know, uh, uh, a handful of the greats, and they, they hung out at World's Gym and Gold's Gym all day long, you know, and he probably supported them and, you know, I mean, if, if you and I had nothing but time on our hands to just hang out at Gold's Gym, you know, and, and eat high-protein foods and work out all day and everything, spend hours and hours, and, and then go on the beach, hey, let's get a tan. Hey, Jeff, let's go on the beach and, you know, get a little tan. I mean, of course we, we would win contests. Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> but it doesn't really work that way in the real world. <laughs> no, you have, you have a life, you have a family. And uh, then I found out from the old Bob Hoffman um, um, book of 
barbell training, which was in uh, circa the 1940s, that the greatest strong men who ever lived had very short, high intensity uh, periods of physical, high demand physical stress, followed by hmm. very long rest periods of recuperation. Well, you know, when you think about it, James, that's what makes sense. It just seems too easy to be true. I mean, easy as far as it's not complicated. <laughs> no, because the, the greatest strong men that were like back then were sailors and butchers. And the reason why he mentioned sailors and butchers, let's take the, uh, the butchers back then had to wrestle the livestock, literally. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Uh, and the sailors had times where, you know, you had to pull the ropes and, it was, you know, physically demanding, followed by periods when, where you had nothing to do but just lie around and recuperate. And uh, the first strength training workouts were patterned after those occupations and lifestyles. Uh, high intensity, go to failure, push yourself possibly a little beyond the point of failure and then have... A lot of rest. Yeah, right. It works. <laughs> and it works to this day. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of people, they have these uh, gimmicks and infomercials and you just like um, people, the young people, they believe it. The young guys believe it. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is just junk. It's just uh, gimmicks to make money. Exactly. It is. You know. Uh, it's a shame that people still believe that. But, uh, I mean, I guess we... We wouldn't know any better if we hadn't found out the truth some kind of way. Well, you never stop learning throughout life. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm finding that out the older I get. Yeah, I'm still yeah. learning new things. You know, uh, uh, it's good to be a very well-rounded person. Uh, I, I don't like, um, I mean, I once knew a, a man with a master's degree who didn't know that General Motors made Chevrolet, Pontiac, Buick, and Oldsmobile. Oh, come on. <laughs> and, and Cadillac. No, he didn't know. He didn't know because he had tunnel vision. You know, everything was his career, you know. And yeah. I don't want I don't want to be that way. I always want to be well-rounded. And uh, um, um, I don't mean well-rounded like my governor here, Chris Christie, but, you know, well-rounded. Uh, yeah, I know it's me. <laughs> educate, educate, or, or uh, Chef uh, Paul Prudhomme. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know well-rounded. But anyway. Who happened to look like the late Dom de Louise, but anyway, that's another story. But anyway, yeah, um, they do look like twins. They look like twin brothers. But <laughs> uh, I used to watch Justin Wilson on the old t uh, cooking shows. Oh yeah, and uh, my wife's grandmother said that they were kin to him. I'm not sure how how close to kin, but they they had some kind of relation, to yeah. cousins or something. Justin Wilson, I remember it. The the thing that cracked me up. I remember it stuck in my head. He says, you know, you know, people are asking me why I use olive oil. And I'm thinking, what the hell is he saying? Then I realized what, what he was saying. They tell me, Justin, why do you use olive oil all the time? Hey, I use this olive oil because I like olive oil. He was saying <laughs> olive oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He talked funny. Yeah, I guarantee. Anyway, I guarantee that Jeff Banken says the world's strongest snack because I, at the beginning of this podcast, as you saw, is a copy of his certification. So, uh, you know, this is a, a very uh, serious gentleman when it comes to strength training. And um, now tell me about, um, you also have a love for the old time strongmen. I think they performed at carnivals back in the day. Yeah, they perform at carnivals, uh, vaudeville, which would be uh, like live theater. Uh, they would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, many of them would be in circuses. And then some of them, they were lucky enough to live somewhere like New York City, could perform uh, daily or weekly at somewhere like uh, Coney Island. Yeah, that's right. The whole season, the whole uh, spring and summer season, they, they had that opportunity. And Atlantic City, New Jersey. Yeah, I bet that would be another good place for them to go to. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure they had something like that yeah. in California. Yeah, I would yeah. imagine maybe Santa Monica Pier or something. Uh, yeah, and, and Muscle Beach. Yeah. I'm not sure when that became popular, yeah. but I mean, I know some of the guys would work out outdoors and attract crowds, and I would imagine they put on like a 
yeah. hand balancing performances and things like that because I've, I've seen pictures of that stuff from yeah. way back. Well, uh, my friend was telling me that the uh, Fisherman's Wharf area of San Francisco is probably the mecca for street performers. So I, I imagine any any place that's a mecca for street performers, um, you know, would be do. Uh, key, um, I know Key West, Florida, has a tourist area where the people watch the uh, the sun the sunset. Uh, and there's a lot. There's um, cruise ships that that dock there. Hey, personally, I was there, and the sun looks the same way there. Than it does in New Jersey. I yeah, mean, but there's just something about it. Huh? People want to travel all the way down there to see it for some reason. Yeah, yeah there are, you're on vacation. <laughs> Let's say you're on the island of Maui and there's uh, coconut palms, and you're like, oh, the sunset is breathtaking. Yeah, that's because you're happy. You're on vacation. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's breathtaking. But I see the same, the same bright orange uh, ball dropping in the sky right here. <laughs> that's right. And. You know, you said cruise ships. I know that there's at least one modern strongman that uh, has performed on a cruise ship before as really? part of their uh, really? entertainment acts. Um, yeah, I, I have to do more. Um, I know there's there's various famous uh, strongmen, uh, uh, Hackenschmidt and uh, um, uh, uh, Zass, the Russian during World War One. Well, he used isometrics. Um, that's what he said. Now, getting back to old legends, uh, Mr. Charles Atlas, actually, they found out he was lying. He did not build his physique and strength through isometrics, which he called dynamic tension. He did it with old-fashioned resistive training with weights. Yeah, I mean, he won, uh, what did he, yeah. he won first place in some physique contest in New York City. And uh, I, I don't see how he could have done it with just his muscle tension. But I guess that's a good program for people wanting to get started at a young age. Yeah, I but mean, that's about it. I mean, when I was in, in in the late 70s, when I was in high school, I bought the bowl worker, you know, made uh, from made in Germany. The the same German man, Mr. Jerk uh, Cabell, who made the uh, old telepander exercise device and uh I've seen one of those. I'm not even sure how that's supposed to work, though. But I, I have a Facebook friend that still yeah. uses them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a nice it's an isometric type of, of uh, apparatus, and uh, you know it, it used to be in the back of uh, you know Field and Stream, uh, hunting magazines, wrestling magazines in the back. Uh, uh, yeah, along with the uh, you know the spring device, the chest expander with all the springs. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I used to catch the, the hairs of my chest used to get caught in the damn thing. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I could see that you'd have to wear a shirt using one of those. Yeah, I, I've got a modern one that uses those uh, rubber tubing or whatever, but uh, it's not the same as yeah. those metal uh, springs that they used yeah, to use. Yeah. I could see how that could catch your skin and pinch you. Yeah, well, I, if I, you weren't I, careful. Eventually, I want to get into that because I love my power bands that I got online. Uh -huh. I saved a lot of money getting these on Amazon, and they are every bit as challenging as any barbell, dumbbell, or machine. Not oh, yeah, and they used to have championships uh, of that stuff. I know I've yeah. got a book that has a bunch of old-time strongmen, and one of them was, or several of them, I mean, have been champion, uh, what they call them back then? Yeah, these strand are, pullers. Yeah, they, they called them strand pullers uh, way back. They were strand pulling champions, which is the same as a chest expander. Yes, exactly. Hey, resistance is resistance. Our our muscles don't know the difference between a a, a, a boulder, you know, of uh, of granite and uh, and and a, and a um, expensive uh, um, designer machine, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Our, the, the muscles don't give a damn. Yeah, that's right. You know, resistance is resistance. So all time training can involve anything. Uh, I mean, look at that. The man from the Netherlands, uh, Mr. H uh, Hank Bakker, you know, he uses, uh -huh. he, uses, he uses all kind of stuff. Well, he, he uses, um, he took like gigantic uh, links from the shipyards that they use um, to the chain to hold the uh, cargo ship like you know like one oh, link yeah. one link weighs a, a lot and and um he took all these devices from from the shipyard industry and he started working out with them 
and um, um, yeah, I think he's a mighty big fella. He's a big guy, and um, the thing is that that's proof, you know. Also, with guys who worked out, you know, over the centuries, you know, maybe they lifted with maybe they lifted boulders. Uh, I mean, um, anything with weight can be resistance, and he he actually got proficient in it, and. The thing about using unconventional devices and, and, uh, and um, objects is that they're not balanced. So you have to struggle to keep them balanced. Oh, yeah. And I've got, I've got a little collection of things I use from time to time to supplement my, my workouts. And uh, I can tell you that is true. Now, it is a lot tougher. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt, because you have to balance it. You have to lift it and balance it. Now, uh, now, what have you done uh, as far as um, competitions uh, in public? Tell, tell the folks what you've done. Okay. Uh, I don't really do competitions, but what I do is I do a performance, just similar to a lot of the old-time strongmen we were talking about. What I'll do is I'll go speak at a school or a church or uh, any type of uh, public venue like that. And what I would do is put on a performance – I'll uh, do various things that I can go over if you want me to. And throughout the show, I use crowd participation. I use um, either children or adults from the audience to come assist me. And what I do is I get everybody's attention. And once I really have their attention, before I do my finale, I'll give them a message. The message may be at a school that, uh, you know, they can do their best in their testing so that they uh, not only make their school proud, but they do the best they can in life and use that as a starting point to do their best in life. Right. Or if I'm in a church, uh, I'll preach a gospel message or I'll share about what uh, Jesus Christ has done for me. Right. Because uh, I, I had a rough time in life at, at one time and uh, he's really brought me a long way physically and emotionally and pretty much any way you could think of. Uh, my life has been changed and impacted and now I get to, to share that through these performances and then there's also been a few times where i was i mean, have been able to uh perform on tv i've made friends with some of the guys at our local tv station and what they'll do they'll celebrate uh i don't know if you're familiar with the seinfeld tv show yeah but in that show they had a made-up holiday called festivus yeah i'm a big festivus fan okay well every festivus or thereabouts for the last three to four years, I've been able to get on our local station and perform a feat of strength. And, it, you know, it always coincides with Christmas. It's real close to Christmas. So uh, that's also a neat thing I've been able to do. Yeah. And then uh, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with crawfish. They look like miniature lobsters. Yeah, they're freshwater lobsters. I, I've had them uh, many a time. I used to work with seafood for 10 years, and we had live crawfish going all over the floor and uh, running around. And, yeah, I'm very familiar with them. Okay. Well, our company, the company I work for in my day job, they give the employees a crawfish boil every year where their whole family, you know, their, their spouses and their children can come with them. And probably for the last six or seven years, I've also been able to perform for the children at, at that venue. So I've had lots of neat experiences. And I even get to sometimes uh, go to like a, a home for troubled youth. And I've been to a Ronald McDonald house before. So so doing this really opens up lots of opportunities for me to be able to bless people in a special way with either the performance itself or the performance and the message that comes along with it. Well, it's, it's really a neat thing to be able to do. Well, especially when you're doing a fundraiser. You know, fun, yeah, those, yeah fun, mm -hmm. fundraisers and um, giving a testimony, a personal testimony about your own life, they go hand in hand. Um, they really do. And I, I found a lot of the strong men, not all of them, but a lot of the ones that are active today uh, do something similar. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Actually, I have a good friend. His name is Ken Create. He's a performing artist. Uh, he does uh, creative mime, creative dance, and um, he uh, he's quite unique. Uh, he, he combines magical props, you know, uh, LED lights. uh, uh -huh dancing, levitating canes, and he, uh, he does a routine, but he's also an evangelist, and he, he, does, he ministers, um, you know, uh, he's a minister, he, he, he gives, um, he talks a lot about, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get sidetracked, you know, getting away from the main theme of the show, but he, he talks a lot about 
Paul's letters and uh, that we're in uh -huh. the, the dispensation of grace now and he talks about Paul's letters and um, and uh, so on and so you know we're not on we're not necessarily just under the law anymore like the Old Testament but anyway he he gets into a lot of that I mean he's, he, he's really he's really good and I I did many shows with him it, it's on YouTube um, I'll have to check that out. That sounds neat. Yeah, Ken Create. Uh, just Google uh, Mega Life Twenty One Ken Create, and it'll all come up. Uh, everything he does, and um, but he does a lot of fundraisers. Getting back to that, and um, what what he'll do is uh, he'll go to his favorite his favorite uh, local dance club to practice his routines because it's not a very crowded place. He has a lot of room to do it, and he and he uses that as a place to work out, so to speak. And then he'll go to a really popular club, and what happens is people will walk up to him and say, "Wow, you blew me away! What, where do you get all this a, a physical ability and energy? How do you make this happen?" And he says, "It's it's the Lord." So, you know, and then they'll they'll say, they'll either walk away from him or they'll go, really? Tell me more about this. And that, yeah, that sounds interesting. And that's his segue into into um, talking to people. But, you know, the best is when he gets, when he goes before a very large group at a venue. A, yeah. If he happens to be performing at a church for a fundraising event, uh, indoors, outdoors, whatever. He has he has a very um, uh, a what's the word a very gentle way of getting his messages across without bopping people on the head. With it. Yeah, I understand. That's cool. You know, a so uh, 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 you can't. Yeah, you, you you people get pissed when you when you force things on them. But uh, yeah, he that's what he does. But um, speaking of crawfish. I have an idea. You know, crawfish, when they grow, they molt, just like any other crustacean. Yeah. And when they molt, they're very soft. So, you watch them, they molt, you put them on ice, and uh, and you, you eat the whole thing. You, you fry them up, and now you can eat the whole crawfish. Soft-shell crawfish. Soft That'd be pretty interesting. Like, so, <laughs> like soft-shell crabs. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, um, uh, but anyway, uh, you can do that with any crustacean, uh, but... Uh, I don't want to, I know we're digressing quite a bit, but, um, yeah, so you do, you have your particular T-Rex performance that you do in yes. events, and um, then you get a chance to speak about your own life and yourself, which is uh, very effective, and uh, with the schools, I think it teaches the kids how to focus and work hard at something and really focus. Well, that's what I try to tell him, James, because uh, when you're subjected to something like a, a state standard, you know, not every kid tests well. But that doesn't mean not every, that doesn't mean all those kids that don't test well are dummies. No. It just means that that may not be the particular thing they're good at. So what I try to encourage them is, you know what, you can't all be performing strong, man, because that just wouldn't work. We can't all be exactly the same. But if you'll get around the right people that will encourage you. And you'll work hard. You'll be able to figure out what you're good at. And if you'll pursue that with all your might, you will be a successful person in life. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's what I try to pretty much tell them at these schools. And then uh, I think next year I may have the opportunity to do some anti-bullying uh, programs, which uh, I have traveled with a group before and done that. But uh, I have not had the opportunity to do that myself. So I think that's going to be able to expand what I'm able to do in my repertoire, you know. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, uh, because I noticed that many of your big, strong, very powerful, famous athletes that are known for their size and strength, many of them were picked on as a child, you know? Yeah, that, if you look at the uh, bios of the old-time strongmen, a lot of them had that same uh, uh, same story when they were little. Actually, uh, I don't know if you know this, James, but... For the last couple of years, they've been working on a documentary or a movie about the Mighty Adam, the yeah. little Jewish strongman from... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Well, let's see. Last summer, I think it was last summer, 2015, Yeah, I had the opportunity to be flown to Washington, D.C. and be interviewed for that documentary. Wow. 
And when I was there, not only did I get to have that opportunity, I got to meet some other performance strongmen, and one was uh, the Mighty Adams' last uh, protege, Slim the Hammerman. Oh, wow. I don't know if you've heard of him, but uh, I think back in Madison Square Garden, he set some record by levering uh, two hammers that were joined in the middle. I think they weighed a total of 56 pounds. He was able to lever them down to his shoulder or his nose and then back up. That That's, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's still still a very powerful older gentleman. He's I think around eighty now or in his early eighties. Without without but, uh, without screwing up his elbow joints, he did it. Yeah, now he does he does say and did show me that he's got some little knots all over his hands. He said that's from over the years his little stress fractures that have happened from him doing his performances. Yeah. But uh it doesn't seem to have affected him in any type of way that I could tell. Because he's yeah. still in great shape, still got a very powerful handshake. <laughs> Oh yeah, def definitely. Uh, you know when you're um, when you you. I mean, I mean, a, a a person's grip strength is tied into their forearm development. Uh, you know their wrist and forearms. Uh, um, but you know you can't really. You uh, an athlete should never neglect any one part of his body. Uh, That's right. You know, I mean. Um, but it, it, strength is deceiving. A person could have tremendous tendon ligament, you know, tendon strength, and uh, do amazing things. And um, I mean, look at look at uh, Babe Ruth. He had skinny, ch spindly chicken legs and a barrel-shaped body, about a mm -hmm. foot or so. He partied all the time. He had uh, women galore uh, sent to his hotel room. He drank like a like a fish, and he and he ate. Constantly, Every, anything, anything you threw in front of him, and, and he was still uh, an outstanding pitcher as well as hitter. But you know, I don't, I don't recommend that people follow Babe Ruth's lifestyle. But <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was, uh, he was beyond a, a party animal back in, back in at that time. But um, um, hey, wasn't that the time of prohibition? Where the hell did he get all his booze from? Probably communion wine or something like that. That's what a lot of them did. They yeah. would order extra communion wine and have a big party. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people died from uh, like uh, from uh, watered down uh, uh, cheap moonshine with formaldehyde in it. And I I, I, uh, I saw I can the, only imagine. I saw the documentary about about the old speakies. Yeah, yeah. People uh, people used to. Uh, Used to kind of stretch out their their cheap liquor, their their. Um, but uh, I still don't understand why people can't have a still in their in their backyard. I mean, I don't know. You can't have chickens over here. You know, you can't have chickens and say, "Oh, I want some hens. I want to raise my own eggs." You know, the town will come down on you for it. You got to have a the permit for this, an ordinance is an ordinance against that, an ordinance against something else. I don't know, but that's another political talk show. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, you own your home, but do you really own your home? Well, uh, you got to pay taxes on it every year or they'll take it away from you, even yeah. if you've owned it for 100 years. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, if you want a high stockade fence, they'll, they'll come around and say, hey, your fence is too high. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you know, now you can't Now you can't even collect rainwater. They arrest people for collecting rainwater. Really? In certain states. Yeah. The nerve. Oh, yeah. oh man. You can't be off the grid in Florida. They'll they'll come and uh, they'll send a SWAT team and yeah, you can't be off the grid. You have to be a slave to uh, to uh, to the to the fat cats. Oh yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I, I I used to enjoy watching that show, Mountain Men, how these people survive being off the grid. And, uh, uh huh. They do it. They do it. But uh, but anyway, so. When people think of strongmen, they think of those that bend horseshoes and you know, um, uh, steel yeah. steel bars or whatever, and uh, oh yeah, breaking chains. Those are like the standby stunts. Uh, um, I mean the uh, the typical um, things that strongmen do at carnivals, but um, it's a lifestyle change. It's not. It's not something where, you know, you're going to devote yourself to exercise and then when you leave the gym, you, you light up a cigarette. 
uh, you know, or drink excessively or do drugs. Uh, I, I believe if you're not going to do it right and live the clean, straight edge lifestyle, then don't even bother going to the gym. I agree because when you do stuff like I do, there's kids and even adults that end up looking up to you and you've got to be a good example to them. It's it's a responsibility. It really is. A role model. So, yeah. mm -hmm, that's well, exactly right. Well, the late Jack LaLanne had said in, ter in regards to parenting, he says, the best way to teach is to lead by example. You You, instead of like, it's like forcing a kid to learn how to play piano or violin, and you know you hit you hit, you wrap them on the knuckles. You better learn that. They're gonna they're gonna hate the piano. They're gonna despise it. But if you right. if you lead by example, people, children, especially children, they pick up on it. You know they they make you a role model, and uh, you know or gee, once you're a role model, now now you have a lot of responsibility. Too. That's true, and uh, you got to take that serious because uh, those are the people that are going to replace us when we're either old or you know pass on, uh, and we have a responsibility to do our best to teach them in the manner you're talking about. And that's what I that's what I try to do with these children that I talk to, and even when I get to talk to uh, young adults and others, I try to be a good example. And you know, nobody's perfect, but you, you, it is a responsibility for you to do the best you can to be a role model. And to uh, be a blessing to them, and and if you do that, I believe they will pass that on to others in their own way. Well, heaven help millennials and and younger and little kids uh, need positive role models today because you know I mean you have a, uh, you have millennials that if you hold the door open for them, they'll never say thank you. I mean they they feel they act like they're entitled. Yeah, and um, it's a real shame. They've yeah. been raised by TV, I would think. That's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. Parents, uh, young parents, uh, whether they're Generation X or Y or whatever you want to call them, younger parents that do not discipline their kids, that are too lazy to do that, that, that do not want to take the time to raise them. They either let the television do it or... Um, um, if they're rich, they might have a nanny or, you know, people mm -hmm. taking care of them. And they feel that by buying them expensive uh, 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 gifts, buying them expensive things, that that replaces love and all that sort of thing. But anyway, that that's the problem we have now. So, you know, when a positive role model like yourself comes around, uh, you're a needle in a haystack. Yeah, this nice. it's nice. And... It's really a blessing because uh, I, I did not always have all positive role models around me. But, uh, you know, like I said, part of my testimony is I was changed by my relationship with Jesus Christ and the people that came around me when I needed them. And uh, because of that, I'm the man I am today. And if, if I wouldn't have had those people and I wouldn't have had Jesus Christ, yeah, I'd be a piece of trash. Yeah. And nobody would want to hear me <laughs> give my testimony out probably wouldn't be doing a good job of it anyway because I'd have to lie. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't grow up with a father. My my grandfather had to do the best he could as a, as a male role model. Um, you know, and that was pretty much it. Uh, in those days, uh, women that were divorced were not, were discriminated against. If there were divorced, yeah. a woman with young children and a single parent household, and they gave her a hard time, gave my mother a lot, a lot of grief. And, um, you know, you do the best you can. I mean, um, some people have, uh, some people that are rich and famous today have literally slept in cars. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were really struggling. Uh, I think uh, Sylvester Stallone is one of them that actually had to sleep in his, his car many times and... Uh, you know, I mean, it goes on and on. I mean, there's a lot of people who... I, I admire people who had very little and just worked their way up. Yeah, I mean, it takes it takes that kind of work ethic to be successful. And you don't have to, you know, become a rich and famous person or a movie star, but you can be successful if you will work hard in life yeah. and uh, do the best you can, you know. Now, these strong... 
Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, and try to surround yourself with uh, people that will add to your life and not take away from it. Yeah, not toxic negative people, but positive people that will add to it. Right. Yeah, now getting back to the strong men, you know, I would think that maybe a big motivator with the, the strong men that were abused as a child is anger. Like they probably have decided that I am not going to be bullied anymore, and they focus really hard on their training and they and they just have this desire to get so sh big and strong that they will not be bullied again and i think yeah i would think that's a big motivating factor in some of them and another one i would think would be uh you know if you're if you had a dad or didn't but uh you know you have that need for a good father and Either if he wasn't there at all or if he wasn't, uh, you know, a good role model for you, you're always trying to prove to him that you can be successful, even, you know, if he's not there to see it. That's another motivating factor. Hey, worst comes to worst. Maybe maybe finding a good pastor could be a, a, a good role model for a, for a kid, a boy that doesn't have a father. Oh, sure. Yeah. A good pastor. And that's one thing we need in this world, and you know that, is, is more good men. There's, there's a lot of people that are male, but there's not a lot of good men out there. Well, like my grandmother says, anybody could be a father. That's a piece of cake. I mean, uh, I mean, a father as far as the uh, uh, biologically, you know, right. pollinating, oh, yeah. pollinating a woman and creating a child. Anybody could do that, but to actually, you know, be in the kid's life, yeah there's, yeah, there's not a lot of positive role models that are involved in your kid's life per personally. Uh, uh, but we're living, I mean, honest to God, I, I think that having a good, healthy hobby or interest like physical fitness, it could be health and nutrition, it could be anything positive. I think it's important today because... The world is in so much turmoil, especially the United States, that uh, I, I literally think that we are living in the end times. And um, I, I just think it's good to have something positive to hang on to. I think so. And it, you got to have a way to blow off steam. And if you don't have something positive to do, you'll end up doing things you regret. Yeah. And uh, I tell you, physical fitness is how I blow off steam. And, excellent, uh, excellent way to blow off steam. Oh, it's a great way. And then, you know, it, it makes you healthier, makes you stronger. And as you get older, uh, it keeps you in shape and keeps your legs going longer. Because, yeah. you know, when your legs go out, you start going downhill. Oh, yeah. Legs are extremely important. In fact, that's your foundation of your of your building, your temple. Yeah. Uh, 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 hey, what about the... the um, the motivation of seeing your progress. Uh, hey, look Look how much I'm lifting now compared to last month. That's right. And if you keep a logbook, that's one of the best things somebody showed me years ago was keeping track of it because you can, you don't have to go off memory. Your memory's not going to be correct on this kind of stuff. You can go back and look yeah. in that logbook and see how much you've actually progressed and it'll put a smile on your face. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you saw what uh, the resistance you started with, and how it kicked your ass, and then all of a sudden, uh -huh. six, where you are six months after that, is, you, you'll, you'll say, how did I ever do it? This is incredible. How did I, I accomplish something great? You know what I mean? And it makes you feel good and self-confidence. And, and, then, and then you set more goals and more goals and more goals. That's right. And... Uh even if you're not a performer, you can be a role model to someone else by sharing physical culture with them, you know, which was any of the things that you would do to become physically stronger and in better shape. Right. Now, um, um, your, um, your diet is, what is it? Is this basically healthy home cooking or are you, you have any preferences? Well, on my lifting days, I try to eat a couple cans of tuna. Okay. And uh, besides that, I, I am not the best eater, but I do try to eat healthy home cooking when I can. And uh, what I do during the day is I try to stick with things like oatmeal, salad, uh, fresh fruit, which would be like bananas and apples, oh. and uh, things of that nature. 
you know, I try to, I try to eat healthy during the day, have a good supper. And then, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm not the greatest eater, but uh, just, just making those little changes in my diet has helped me trim down and it's helped me feel better, get in shape. And then, you know, what I do before I work out, I may have like a, a banana with some peanut butter and uh, a cup of coffee or a glass of milk. And um, wow. we don't have a lot of organic food around here, but I do try to buy the best milk I can. Um, the freshest salad I can, you know, things like that. Is that, is that make a sense? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's funny you mentioned peanut butter on the banana with cold milk because that was my favorite snack. After after oh. a workout, I, I would get oh. natural. Not it's the hard one, to beat. <laughs> yeah, not the Skippy with the sugar in it and the corn syrup. I mean, you know, just 100% no. ground peanuts. That's right. And uh, on a banana and wash it down with ice cold milk. That was my favorite snack, bar none. I mean, uh, 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 I try. Look, I tried. I tried being more vegetarian, but I'm sorry, folks. I'm, I'm a natural born carnivore. I, I, I love uh, animal source protein. I'll eat seafood. I'll eat barbecue. Whatever, whatever. Um, oh, I'm right with you. You know, <laughs> you know I, I can't mean, be vegetarian. I just try to I try to uh, save the the animal proteins for supper. I I think it keeps your testosterone level up. That's why I feel weak if I don't eat some animal protein. I I feel like I've lost energy. Energy, you know. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I go to a store that's supposedly competing with Whole Foods. It's it's a German, a supermarket chain called Aldi, at, at oh, okay. at Illinois, and they have a lot of organic foods. And um, I was telling my sister, I said, you know what? I I buy these. Uh, I buy the frozen fruit there. Uh, frozen blueberries, fro frozen mango chunks, uh, whatever, whatever. So anyway, I told her, I said, you know, everybody's uh, talking about buying fresh fruit, right? And fresh vegetables. Yeah. But you know something? This, fre this frozen fruit blows away any of the fresh produce. And then I realized, I find out that, hey, this frozen fruit is all vine ripened. Ah. Uh -huh. The same goes for the veggies. Vine ripened. That does make a big difference, doesn't it? You let something stay on a vine. Let, let's let's take blueberries, for instance, or tomatoes. You let it ripen totally on the vine. Then you pick it, you wash it, and you you flash freeze it right away. Compared to a a tomato that's picked green, and God knows how long it's been on a on a, on a train and you know in, in, in storage. And, uh, you know, it's not ripening on the vine. Then it gets to the market. And then you have a tomato with no flavor. In it. Right. <clears throat> you know, uh, um, unless you're getting it from a farmer's market, you know, on a roadside or something. But, uh, um, yeah, there's no comparison. The frozen. What I do is uh, there's a man on YouTube. He's very funny. He's an older gentleman bodybuilder, older guy named Scooby, and, and uh, spelled like the, you know, Scooby-Doo, uh, yeah. and he, uh, he's a funny guy, he's a comedian, he wears a white Gilligan hat, and um, he makes a joke about everything, but he teaches at the same time, you know, he's not stuffy and, and serious, uh, but he's uh, very entertaining, but anyway, his favorite protein source is getting that real thick Greek yogurt and and eating that. So, oh, you know, I, I have that in my diet too. Yes. And, uh, oh, that's some good stuff. So this is what I do. Talk about a refreshing, healthy dessert. I take the Greek some Greek yogurt. I put it in a large uh, um, cereal bowl, and then I, I pour some milk in it, and I you know I stir it up. Then I put the flo the frozen blueberries. Or, Ooh, I bet that's good. Or blueberries and mango chunks in there, and what? And I stir it up. And what happens is the frozen fruit turns all the milk and yogurt into like a a, a slurpee, like a slush, uh -huh. like a like a popsicle. All right, and that well, is that sounds good. And that is awesome. And then some of the juice oozes out of the blueberries into the yogurt, and or mangoes. Oh, I'm telling you, Jeff. 
It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, it sounds like it. And one of, what I was going to say earlier, one of the things I started doing, uh, there's a guy from Florida that's started helping me a little bit with uh, not the strongman stuff, but my regular uh, workouts and, and things related to that. He advised me to start having a couple cans of tuna for extra protein. What I do, I'm already a big person. I didn't want to get super, super big. I want to kind of lean down some more. I eat the two cans of tuna on my training days and I eat it uh, before and after lunch, you know, like an hour or two before and after lunch. And I'll tell you what, that has made a big difference. You know what I used it's to just the, the straight albacore tuna in water. You know what I used to put, do with the tuna? Now, I switched to canned salmon because um, uh, the salmon is cheap at this market. It's not expensive. Uh -huh. and, and salmon is like 100 grams of protein per pound. Wow. Salmon is high, and it's super high in omega-3 uh, fatty acid, which is very healthy. So anyway, I used to take the um, the canned fish of your choice. I used to put it over um, um, brown rice. I use uh, like uh, brown, organic brown basmati rice, okay, cooked, of course. And then I would put extra virgin uh, olive oil on top of that, mix it up, and... Uh, eat it that way instead of making uh, a tuna salad on, on, on bread, you know, sliced bread, I would uh, have it over brown rice and, um, you know, you season it the way, however you want to do it. I like dry rub. I like spicy dry rub. Yeah. That sounds pretty tasty. Yeah, That's yeah. a lot tastier than the way I eat it. I just put a little mustard on it and eat it as fast as possible so I can get it over with. <laughs> get it, yeah, because it's not it's not exactly baby back ribs eating. Not exactly, no. <laughs> no, I put I I've been using this Himalayan pink salt. It's supposed to be loaded with minerals, even even more than sea salt. I've, I've heard of that, but I've never tried it before. Is it pretty good? It's mild. It's very mild uh, um, salt. I um I made um I make my pancake batter from scratch. I grind the, the flour myself. And I, um, I, I showed the, my mother's caregiver how to make homemade popcorn on a stove the old-fashioned way. And she was amazed. Oh, wow. And she was amazed. And people don't realize how easy it is to make, really. I mean, uh, and it's uh, 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 all you do is you just take a, a large pot with a handle and a lid. You put, you put butter, whatever you want, oil, butter, uh, salt. And you uh, put the popcorn in on a low flame. You cover it. You walk away. Let's say go to the living room. As soon as you hear pop, pop, the first pop, you run into the kitchen. You turn the heat on full blast high. And you uh -huh. start shaking it back and forth. Put your, your hand on the lid and you got the other hand on the handle. And you start shaking. And then it starts going pop, 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 pop you know, like, like a machine gun. Yeah, and it fills up, and there, and that's it. And then you shut the flame off, and you got a whole big pot of uh, freshly made popcorn. That sounds pretty good. It's got the oil, the butter, the salt. All of it is all mixed in already. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had that before. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but I, I do a lot of things like my uh, the homemade uh, oatmeal uh, pancakes. I take the uh, Two heaping uh, cups of uh, rolled oats, uh, mm -hmm. a quarter of a cup of flaxseed um, or chia seed, um, a teaspoon of the uh, sea salt, uh, a lot of cinnamon, and I grind it. I grind it into a flour in uh, in a blender, actually. Um, then I remove the dry contents into a uh, plastic container. Then I, you put the the liquid. You know, like a, uh, you could do one cup. Of milk, two and two cups of water. Uh, you can put some yogurt in there. You can. You got to put oil. So I, I put like a tablespoon of uh, extra virgin uh, coconut oil in there. And um, let's see what else. Uh, and that's about it. And then I, 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 I liquefy that, and then I slowly start pouring the dry mix from you know the uh, the gra the oatmeal flour. Uh -huh. Little by little by little, as you pour it in, it starts to get thicker into a batter. And then you you end up with a batter. And then the batter, you pour it back in a plastic container, and there's your uh, pancake batter. 
That sounds pretty good, man. Sounds like you know how to cook. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I cook pretty good. Actually, I'm going to make a couple of giant pancakes when I when I get off the show. But, nice. But uh, <laughs> I got to figure out what I'm going to have to do. I think I'm going to have chi maybe I'll have Chinese food delivered. See, that's the thing about my area. It's so multi-ethnic. Yeah, you can have food from all around the world, huh? They, and it's not far away. Right. Uh, uh, the big thing here is buffets. We have a lot of big buffets. Are you Are you in New Jersey? Yes, I'm in. Uh, I'm 20 minutes uh, or so west of New York City. Oh, that's right. That's right. You told me that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, if but you're, you're not close to Atlantic City, huh? Not Atlantic City. I'm, but New York, I am. Yeah. I was wondering if that's where all the buffets were coming from. Was the casinos in Atlantic City? <laughs> no, we have plenty of buffets here. Are you kidding? We have awesome buffets with sushi bar and uh, and barbecue and. Uh, 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 you know how much you know how much it costs for lunch to stuff your face? It's like a, like about eight bucks. Wow, that is cheap for everything. With everything, seafood, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, even the um, ice cream. You, uh, I don't. Know. They have just so many different entrees and items at these buffets, and and they're really, it's so economical that it doesn't pay to go to a. Um, let's say a seafood restaurant or a steakhouse it, it, it really it's actually cheaper than going to Wendy's or you know or, or some fast food place it's oh that's very nice cheaper to go to the, the buffet I know people are gonna say I'm digressing I know it but you know what it's a well-rounded show. What can I tell you? <laughs> That's right. Good conversation. I, I agree. Yeah. And, and you know what? A lot of the things we talked about are interconnected in any way. Right. It's all about your your, your health and fitness and uh, growing Yeah, it's a know, in different ways. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's, exactly. It's not all about just working out alone. You know, it's it's a whole lifestyle. And, 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 and you can't... I mean, I don't want to be... I don't want to set records when I'm young and end up decrepit by the time I'm 65. Right. I feel the same way. And that's why I've even changed some of the way as I, I train and do things in my shows because I want my body to, to, to last. Yes. You want you want your body to last. I know I mentioned Jack O'Lane before, but you don't want to be an elderly man who has one foot on a banana peel and one foot in the grave. Right. Exactly. No, you want to be healthy and in great shape when you're in your golden years. You know, uh, in the words of my Uncle Phil, he says, the only thing golden about the golden years is the urine. That's true. My wife's grandma, who just passed away, she was in her 90s. And she said, they said it was the golden years, but it's the corroded years. The corroded years. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I, po I post, remember that photo? I got a lot of heat for it, but remember that, that, that uh, elderly black woman who was a bodybuilder, uh -huh. and then they had a picture of a, a woman that you know did not work out, and and there were two two totally different people. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, I got a lot of heat. Fight. People were saying that's unfair. That's unfair. That's cruel. I says, listen, listen. I am I am not going to walk on eggshells my whole life being politically correct, worrying about offending someone. I, I can only say that I'm going to tell you the truth. And if you embark on physical fitness early enough in your life, it is a fountain of youth. Oh, yeah. It'll keep you going a whole lot longer than uh, all the stuff they hand us these days. The drugs and, you know, all that kind of stuff and surgeries and all that. Yeah. Now, we all know how the drug companies are because you watch television and I'm seeing more and more and more drug advertisements. Oh, they invent ailments that you need a pill for. Oh yeah, you have symptoms. Oh, your uh, your drug, your medication is giving you all these side effects. Well, let me give you an extra one. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes on and on and and and, and, it may, and actually they become glorified legal drug dealers. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. You know? Now, I mean, some stuff is useful for a time, but uh, a lot of it you don't need. A lot of it's just what you're talking about. No. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are drugs who have literally, and they do save people's lives, and and you know, if you if you have a, a serious, God forbid, a, a, a God forbid, a serious 
a, a car accident, you don't want a, a medical nutritionist putting you back together. You right. want you want the surgeon, the neurosurgeon, or whatever. You want you want qualified people. So we're not we're not um, uh, bashing um, the medical profession, but there is something that we have in America now, and it's called uh, uh, profits before people and the planet. And that's right. that's sad. You know, that's sad. That's uh, you know. That's right up Satan's alley. That's all I got to say. No, it really is. Uh, because I think the root word for uh, witchcraft in the New Testament, or at least in one instance, is pharmakia, which is also the root word for pharmacy <laughs> and drugs. Well, um, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, um, doing the right thing. Doing the right thing is my, uh, is my political party. Telling the truth, and uh, if I'm wrong, I'll apologize, uh, and I'm always willing to learn new things. But just doing the right thing and being honest and truthful, that, that's my political affiliation. Um, I don't really believe in political parties. I believe in, uh, I like the grassroots revolution. I like um, a lot of the independence. Um, but, but... <clears throat> Sometimes you got to break some eggs to make an omelet in life. Oh, yeah, it happens. You know, <laughs> Sad but true. You got to, we got to suck it up and, you know, man's got to do what a man's got to do. And it's it's not always going to be pretty and nice. And, um, you know, uh, um, I know I, you, you guys um, down in Louisiana, you got front row seats to all the hurricanes. And that, that, that's got to be rough. <laughs> I would tell you, I do get nervous during hurricane season, and I intentionally don't watch the weather because any storm out in the Gulf, they're going to blow it in out of proportion. Thankfully, thankfully, I know that, so I don't watch all the time. You know, if it's a serious storm, you know, you, you'll, you'll be able to tell, but a lot of times they blow it out of proportion, so people will be paying attention to the news. Well, you have a problem with flooding, right, in South Louisiana? Yes, a lot of people have been impacted by flooding. That's... Uh, Let's see. I am in the southwest corner of Louisiana, between uh, Houston, Texas, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay. The Baton Rouge area, and um, that's like two, two and a half hours west of, I mean, east of me. Yeah. They were really impacted by flooding this year. I mean, they were hit hard. There's some people that, you know, are still rebuilding their homes, still repairing their homes. Some people lost everything. So it's, it was pretty bad. Thankfully, it didn't hit our area, but there's a lot of people that work for the company that I work for that were yeah. impacted, and lots of people we know that it really got hurt in that situation. You literally have to live in a in a big houseboat tied down with cable. Yeah, I mean, when you some think people would have to. I know a guy that did ride out the storm that way a few years ago, uh, what, ten or twelve years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. A float a flotation. Uh, Flota uh, flotation uh, of prefabricated mobile homes that are able to float with flat bottoms. <laughs> yeah, that would help sometimes. Hey, hey, we just, uh, I tell you, uh, it, 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 uh, the most practical inventions are not complicated. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but um, yeah, so uh, it's a shame that some politicians uh, forget to uh, go to disaster areas. And, you know, we all know a certain female that did not show up after the storm. Down yeah, but we were we were also glad she didn't come, even though it was a bad move on her part. <laughs> yeah, she would have she would have brought all those demons down there with her. Yeah, she might have tried to get somebody some contracts that they wouldn't have uh, done what they were supposed to, like she did in Haiti. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what. Hey, you know what amazes me is the so-called liberal moonbeam, uh, Governor Jerry Brown of California. He has restrictions on everybody for uh, using water during the drought, but he allowed uh, Peter, Peter Braybeck of Nestle's to bottle up all the California spring water so he could resell it. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I'm sure he's in somebody's pockets. Yeah, so just because somebody is a, uh, well, the Democratic Party is, I call it the Democrat Party now. I, I don't call it the Democrat Party. You know, it's not, it's so corrupted uh, 
But uh, I know I know I'm mention is mentioning this because this is probably the the last show I'll do before election day. Uh, probably uh, uh, the doomsday election is uh, this coming Tuesday. And uh, heaven help us all. That's all I have to say. Me too. And that more stuff keeps coming out, but uh, hopefully people will pay attention to what's coming out. That they'll not just vote how they always vote. Oh, it's so confusing. It is so confusing because the media, we don't have real old-fashioned honest journalism anymore. It's the, the media. No, you have, to, you have to pick your news sources carefully, for sure. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, forget about, uh, I used to be a fan of MSNBC. I can't stand the people on MSNBC. I will not watch it. I, they're, you know, they are so sold out that um, uh, C uh, CNN has that Anderson Cooper, uh, Mr. Douchebag, a clone. I yeah, I think uh, there's only five or six companies that control all the major media in our country. Yeah, that is true. The oligarch uh, basically does control the media. And, uh, you know, the only way uh, I get my news from is the underground media online. That's where I try to get some of mine, too, because I really just don't trust most of what comes out, unless it's a story that, you know, you, you're not going to have much substance in. You know who you might like? Uh, are you familiar with Alex Jones of InfoWars? Yeah, I watch it sometimes. Now, I will say he gets sensational, but he does get a lot of stuff right, I believe. Yeah, but yeah. He, he, he does good. get pretty sensational when he talks. I like Jesse Ventura's new show, Off the Grid. It's on Aura uh, TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, I think William... Last thing I saw him in was Predator. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 and he had the mustache and the dimple in his chin. Yeah, he was... Uh, uh, that was a long time ago. And he was carrying that big-ass uh, machine gun. Uh-huh. Well, hey, good for him. He was a Navy SEAL in Vietnam War. I had heard he was something like that. I didn't didn't know for sure what it was. Yeah, he was... Could you imagine those guys swimming in sh at night in shark-infested waters? Holy crap. No. you got to have guts to do that. I mean... <laughs> I know a guy who his uh, brother-in-law drove some of those uh, crew boats or whatever you call it. They would drop soldiers off near Vietnam. And he oh, said really? one time he dropped off uh, a Navy SEAL who was a normal looking fella. But when he came back, he, he was a different guy and had to be brought to a special place to be, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, debriefed and everything. Yeah, he they said it was he said that he must have seen some stuff because when he came back, he was a totally different individual. It's very disturbed. So those, I don't know how those guys do it. I don't know either. Yeah, my sister dated uh, some special forces guy that was in Afghanistan, and uh, he had uh, big time issues when when he left. Um, you know, a very nice guy when before he left, but uh, yeah, yeah, he it's, called. It's a shame. Yeah, he, he called. You know, he. At that time, he called my sister from uh, being in some um, Afghanistan. Uh, Af he was in some little cottage uh, under fire, shooting at the enemy, and he calls my sister from the from Golly. A <laughs> cell phone. You know, yeah, bah, 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 in the background, pow, 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 pow. pow. But anyway, um, yeah. So, um, well, we also don't want to see wars for profit either. You know. Uh, no, because the people that get hurt are the ones that are living there, innocent people, and also the soldiers that are put in harm's way for no reason. A lot no of good reason anyway. A lot of innocent people lose their lives for for just a handful of very wealthy old geezers to make more money than they already have. Yeah, it's a real shame. You know, and uh, oh, and by the way, I think I think all these oil rich countries should uh, pick up the tab for this uh, war on terror. I'm telling you, man, it's ridiculous. The, yeah. the amount of money that goes into that stuff with uh, yeah. no results. I mean, Saudi Arabia receiving all that aid from the Obama administration, all that all that tax dollars, and they're, and they're meanwhile, they are the, the worst when it comes to uh, human rights. Oh, yeah. Worse, the worst. And, and, and what do they need... Why do, what does a, a oil rich country need uh, uh, to be um, to get all this uh, I call it welfare instead of welfare welfare I mean 
they have ton, they have tons of money to fight the war on terror, and they don't definitely don't need any U.S. tax dollars going their way. Well, no, because our dollars are going there anyway to buy their oil. We we right. have plenty here, but we go ahead and buy theirs, which and, doesn't make sense either. And the most tragic part of it all is the U.S. veteran that comes home and ends up being homeless and broke. Yeah. That yeah, is the real shame. That is the tragedy. And with nobody here, with nobody to help him out, help her, him or her out. And uh, But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, you will be, um, uh, I guess, on your YouTube channel, which is, uh, any special name that it's called? Jeff T-Rex Bankins, and that's uh, J-E-F-F. -F right. T-R-E-X, and then my last name is Bankins, B-A-N-K-E-N-S. Okay, and you will... You just type that up, I've got... Uh, Videos of training, videos of uh, performances, and, and everything like that. That is fantastic, and I just wanted to make sure that you plugged your um, your home base, so to speak. Your, uh, oh, James, I also have a website now that my wife uh, helps me put together. Oh, great. She did a great job on it. It's same spelling, jefftrexbankins.com, and uh, we've got basic information on there. We've got links to our uh you know, our different social media sites like YouTube and Facebook and everything. And it gives some general information okay. on uh, what we do and how we can, you know, serve you or whoever uh, may want to partake of our services. Yes. And you know something, Jeff? If you do any events like fundraisers where you also get up and speak, if somebody videos that, that'll be a great addition to upload. You know? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, not too long ago, we joined a new church. Uh -huh. And... Uh, the last church I went to, I had to pretty much beg for them to to let me perform for our children, and I ended up ended up being a big success. Of course, well, I knew it would be, but I had to ask. Well, it's not so at this new yeah. at this new church since uh, last spring. I've already performed for the youth twice, and I've spoken to them at the same time, and they've got more plans. And I think what they're going to help me do is one of my dreams that fits along with what I do is. I want to be able to set up like in a local park during a time when, you know, children and families would be there, do a performance, and then at the end, give them a gospel message message so that they have an opportunity to uh, ask Jesus to save them. But I have not been able to do that because I'm not sure what all the logistics go into that. And I, I wouldn't want to do it without having the proper permits and everything like that. So we went to a new members class at our church, yeah. which we've been there over a year, but we just went to the new members class. I was telling the pastor about my my uh, you know dreams that I hope to do, and he's like, "Hey, we'll help you make that happen." So it, it's neat how when the time is right that you'll have the right people come in your life to help you do those kind of things. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, George, pretty cool. George Foreman and Mister T are uh, ministers now. I mean, oh, I, I heard George Foreman was. I didn't know Mister T was. Yeah, Mister T, uh, especially since he uh, he's he's a cancer survivor. You know, I guess. Uh, you know, when people hit rock bottom, they tend to uh, go that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've partnered with a good church. And I'll tell you what, James, next August, I may have the opportunity to to do 10 anti-bullying, no, six anti-bullying programs, and then uh, two, three, four night services uh, at, for, a local, for a local large church. And... Uh, that's something that I've never had the opportunity to do before on my own. It's for strong men. It's a big deal because you're talking about like 10 performances in four days. And on top of that, getting to share the, uh, the good news, the gospel message. And, uh, when I do that, I'm going to have some professional pictures made Yeah. because it'll be our biggest thing we've been able to do so far. My wife's going to get somebody to photograph some of that and I'll, I'll be sure to share that with you. That'd be great, but, uh, and, and and tell your wife that uh, I think Instagram is a, is a good place to load load up all your photographs too. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I have an Instagram account. I just haven't used it in a while because I don't like some of the stuff that comes up when I look up Instagram. <laughs> it's things you're not supposed to look at. Oh, that gets shoved in front of your face, huh? Yeah, and I see that's something I've had to work really hard to overcome. Yeah, yeah. So well, uh, you know, it's tough, man. Well, my. 
Yeah. There's so much stuff in your face these days. It's yeah. tough, tough to overcome all that. Well, that's why over on my Gmail account, uh, I have all the spam going into a spam folder automatically. Yeah, that helps for sure. Because I had, forget it, when I, when I just had Yahoo, which I, I don't use anymore, I had hundreds and hundreds. I had to go through hundreds of unwanted email to pick out the legitimate emails. Yeah. And I said, this is enough. I have to have everything going into the spam folder automatically. And and in the spam folder, there is all kinds of uh, adult-oriented oh, yeah. adult, adult yeah, cool. material. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and that's about it. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, my, my largest group on Facebook, I have five groups on Facebook, folks. Uh, my largest group is Holistic Health Talk. And... Um, I have over uh, over 5,000 uh, members so far and growing. And uh, once in a while, I notice that on my high volume groups like Holistic Health Talk, I get a um, some sleaze bag coming in posting uh, child pornography. And I have to immediately uh, ban that person from the uh, group. I have to kick them out immediately. Oh, yeah, it's all around us, and that's why you've got to not only safeguard yourself, but your family, too. Yeah. And, to, and, um, make sure they don't, because if that stuff gets a hold of you, it's hard to, to get get off of it. No, the, the thing, yeah, the thing is that Facebook, because it's free, see, this is the thing, because it's free, every, every, all the vermin of the world can uh, get on there. That's right. Has access to all the vermin of the world. You know, so anyway, Jeff Bankins, it was my pleasure to have you for the first time on this podcast. Um, I am very sorry that we couldn't do it the way we planned with the videos, but I am sure that uh, once I get my super jacked up computer, I will be able to uh, do some testing and, uh, you know, get back and Oh, that'd be great. I, I tell you what, I really enjoyed myself, and I'm not just saying that. I thought it was a great, uh, a great time. It it is, and it will be. This podcast will be on the internet and YouTube and Google, and uh, you know, it just won't. It just will be like um, your typical run of the mill um, podcast with no without videos, because I I usually like to do it with the videos. Oh, I understand, but. Uh, We'll just do something again uh, whenever you figure out how that work, how your new computer is going to work. Yeah, yeah. Normally, when I when I used to have guests uh, via live stream because I have a live stream channel, I I had no problem doing what I was attempting to do at the beginning. I don't know what it is. It, 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 it might have to do with like what I told you before. Uh, but anyway, it, listen. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Because my, my wife bought a new computer and she's already wanting to get a different one because it's it's similar to what you said and it's not quite doing what it needs to. <laughs> well, the CPU is the uh, this, the uh, the brain that runs everything. I mean that that's your your backbone is your CPU. Your memory helps. Your memory helps, but not not like having a a, a, a more powerful CPU. Right. You know, I agree. You know, <laughs> but anyway, listen, you have a, a great remainder of the weekend and uh, we will talk soon. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.